So where it begins, where we're going to begin, is motion in a single dimension. So where remember I said up down, right, or left right? We call this straight line motion because it's an object that moves along a straight line. And that, that line can be oriented however you like. But the important thing is, you can only move back and forth along that direction. So picture a straight line. That straight line could be um, up or down or left or right, or whatever you like. But you're moving back and forth along that. Okay? This is the only thing that as two unit students we have a look at under um, motion in mathematics. Okay? That's the only one big idea. However, it's worth saying, displacement, velocity, acceleration, they're such big ideas that even though it's like, oh, that's all there is, it's still a really important and major part of the course. Okay? Now, as extension one students, we then extend that a little bit. We say, okay, just for a moment, stay on your straight line. But if what you've got on your straight line is moving in a very particular, predictable way, we call it simple harmonic motion. This is the kind of motion that you observe if you have an object like, say, a ball that floats in a harbour, or rather like a boat that floats in a harbour, and it's moving up and down as the tide comes in and out. Okay, it's not moving back and forth, it's anchored on the one spot, but the tide itself is moving the boat up and down. Okay, So you're still <coughs> on a straight line, it's an up-down straight line. Okay, But it moves in this very predictable way, up and down and up and down. If you were to track this motion, over time, what you get is a, is a wave function, basically, okay? Like, literally, a wave <laughs> function, okay? So that's why we have a look at trigonometry in this context, okay? Were you going to ask yeah, something? Is this simple harmonic motion? Isn't that really? No, no that, that is not. Because when you, when you do that, right, when you're doing this, you're not moving on one axis anymore. If you have a look, for example, if you think about, say, the end of my, um, my pencil, okay? It's actually got up-down motion and left-right motion. So it's in two dimensions, which is why that kind of motion has to be covered Just in the next thing. Which is, I know, right? <laughs> it's, always, it's always the key, actually. Um, projectile motion is what happens when we say, okay, look, let's forget this straight line now, right? In the real world, we can move in far more directions than that. So projectile motion says, okay, if you throw objects, if you throw objects through the air or you propel them, you, you clearly are not just going to get back and forth. You're going to get up and down. Um, there are lots more kinds of motion than that that incorporate up, down, left, right. But this is the most interesting and predictable kind of um, instance of it. Okay? So, simple harmonic, projectile motion. These are what comprise extension one motion. Now, I know it's um, only relevant to two thirds of the room, but since we're all considering it together, you might as well have this all in one piece. When we go into mechanics, which is an extension two topic, we're just going further down into all of the, the details of what's going on. So the first thing is what we call resistant motion. So remember I said, okay, an object is moving, it has such and such displacement, such and such velocity, such and such acceleration. Mechanics is trying to answer the question of, well, why is it doing that? If you've got an object and it is just slowing down forever, why is it doing that? Well, maybe it's in a medium like air, or like a, a muddy pond or something like that that is slowing it down constantly, okay? So resisted motion means it's motion that's being stopped or resisted by something in the medium. <coughs> that's the first thing the extension to motion. The second thing, which is not really one thing, it's, as you see, got a lot of sub points, is called circular motion. So this is where you have objects that are moving round and round and round. Um, so the first thing is, when you have, um, we stay on, if you have a look at all of this at the moment, all of this is in two dimensions, okay, it's all in two dimensions. Um, this is up, down, left, right, okay, so when you've thrown something through the air, you've got that idea. We stay on that plane, that two dimensional plane, we call this first one, this first kind of um, circular motion, uniform circular motion. So that's an object and it's moving around a track. Picture a, a racing car and it's just going round and round a perfect circular track at the same speed all the time. Okay, um, We'll talk about the ideas of lateral and angular velocity in that case. And then we finally break it out from there and say, okay, it's nice to think about one dimension because it's simple. It's nice to think about two dimensions because it's more interesting and there's more interesting mathematics there. But we live in a three dimensional world. Okay, So there are two final things that we finish on. We first call them the conical pendulum. So a normal pendulum is what Nikita was talking about before. Actually, I'm going to borrow these headphones. 
Um, a normal pendulum, like on a clock, okay? A normal pendulum is just swinging back and forth. And so, in fact, this is two-dimensional motion. Do you see this, right? There's up-down, uh, moving from from the distance from the ground, and then there's left-right, like across from back and forth, and that, and that kind of thing. A conical pendulum says, well, what if you move this pendulum and you add um, a direction of motion back and forth between you and me, right? If it moves, in fact, in a kind of conical shape, right? So this traces out a cone, which is why we call it a conical pendulum, okay? So with that extra third dimension and tension along the string that's holding it there and gravity, all that kind of thing, that's what this is about. One last one, and this is where we finish. The last part of motion in mathematics is called bank tracks. Uh, so you remember I told you about a racing car that's going round and round and round a circular track? In reality, if you, when you're going that fast, because you're going round and round and round, there are, your motion is actually pushing you out towards the edge of the track, right? And so you're steering and there's all this friction on your wheels, again, forces that we're going to talk about later on. In order to um, overcome that, and if you have a look, if you imagine a racing track, they actually don't have a flat road. They bank the road so you're at an angle, okay? So what happens is your car is actually racing along and it's sort of, you're actually leaning over. Now anyone who's ridden a bike knows that if you're riding at any decent speed, if you want to turn, you cannot stay perfectly upright. You actually have to lean over to turn around and that's what bank tracks are all about, okay? So this is extension two measure, okay? And it is called mechanics because it's interested not just in how things are moving, but why, why are they doing that?